All right, so the next job that we're going to do is kind of funny. We're going to hack into the United States government database, the FEMA genetic database, and we're going to overwrite the genetic sequencing of the president and his son, the senator, to make it seem like the senator is a clone of the president. Don't ask me why. That's just what we're doing. Uh, you're a fool for asking in the first place. Uh, this is probably one of the tougher jobs in the entire game, in all honesty. So what's going to happen is I have two execution agents, A and B. Uh, a is going to be in charge of telling B where to go for the most part. B is going to be the one going around doing the work. A is kind of directing him. So let's watch A first. A is going to grab file 300. File 300 has the names of the two of the two subjects, the president and the senator. Uh, and A is going to grab that file, copy over uh, the name of the president and then bring the file over into the gateway and drop it off We're gonna have to come back and pick that up and read from it again in a, uh, after we do the first half So we're gonna leave that there to go pick it up and execution agent a is gonna head into drive one Which is where f this file 200 is the one that contains all of the Location information. So there's an article in the zine uh, that explains how this works exactly uh, you'll see like President Walker Kane is in file 200 here, and then you'll see a sequence of 10 values, uh, like 540. What these values mean is they tell you where to find chunks of information. So the genetic information for the president here is kept in 10 chunks. That's what these 10 numbers stand for. The first number, the, the hundreds place digit, tells you which drive it is in. So if it's five, that means it's in drive five over here. Uh, which is also linking over link 805, make that nice and easy. Uh, the tens place, the 4 in 540, tells us which file to grab. It's 200 plus a number, so it's going to be in file 204. And then the last digit, the ones place, tells us how many times we have to offset in the file. So if we look in file 204, uh, it's got a bunch of DNA sequences here, and they're in groups of 10 as well. So if they're, if we're given zero, like in 540, we're gonna skip zero groups of 10. But if the number was nine, then we would skip nine groups of 10. We'd seek 90 values forward in the file. And then we know that each chunk is 10 values long. So that would mean that in total, the, the DNA sequence of each person is 100 values, 10 chunks of 10. So here's what's going to happen is that first execution agent A is going to read through the file until he finds, finds the person he's looking for. He's looking for the president. The president's the first one. So he's not looking for long. He finds it. Then I'm going to put 10 in my T loop. Uh, I couldn't break this loop out because there's so many steps in it that would make I would exceed my size limit. So I'm using my T loop to save space. Uh, we take a look at 540. And we're going to copy that into our X because we don't need the name anymore. And we're going to send over, I'm, I'm sending over the digits individually, and this is to make the work easier for XB. So I'm going to send over first the five over to B. And what has B done? I haven't mentioned B at all. all. So far, all he's done is walked into the gateway and made a blank file, and he's waiting to hear from A to tell him what to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take 800 and add it to the value I'm getting from execution agent A, and that's going to tell us where we need to link. So we got a 5 from A, we know we need to link on 805, so we do that. Now what I do is I add 200 to the next thing that execution agent A is sending, which is the sec the tens place digit, and that tells us, okay, now I'm going to have to grab file 204. And then I'm going to multiply the next value I get from execution agent A by 10, and that's going to tell us our offset into the file that we need to go. Once I have those two values in X and T, I'm going to replicate a guy that I call Reader, and he's going to appear here. Uh, to save some time as well, Execution Agent A is the one who's in charge of directing B when it's time to be reading information from the president or when it's time to be writing to the senator. And so I also copy over my T value for A, because we're doing 10 times. I'm copying which iteration I'm on over to B so that B can also be aware of, is this, am I still reading or is it time for me to start writing? So I copy that over and B picks that up as well. Uh, yep, so I'm sending over, I'm, I'm, I have nine more to go. So B is aware of that. Uh, and then B is gonna go into a local communication mode with its reader here. And this is an unwound, I used a, an at rep annotation to just copy. So now XB0 has picked up file 204 in his hands. He's performed his offset, which was zero this time, but in future cases, it will certainly not be. And now I'm just gonna copy 
the 10 values of interest over to B. And once XB0 has done that, his job is done. He's going to halt XB0. Uh, is now going to head back to the gateway and then take a look at that value that we had gotten from XA saying, are there more that I need to read? Uh, we've we've kept that in our T register for now. Now that we know that we're going to uh, jump back or now that we know that we're going to get start reading the next values from execution agent A, know that we are still reading. And the reason I did the check beforehand and not afterhand was to skip a couple of steps to get my cycles down. Um, if I had him just now read from execution agent A saying whether there was more or not to read, then execution agent A would finish copying that, then it would have to do the T jump, then it would have to copy into FX again, and then it could start sending messages out. Meanwhile, that whole time XB is waiting. But having execution agent A send over its T value earlier, let me skip those cycles. And since I have to do that, uh, that sequence 20 times, 10 for the reads and 10 for the writes, that ends up saving a good like 80 cycles in your final solution. But that was me just trying to optimize to get down into the lower part of the histogram. You could you could easily just have XB now read from XA saying, am I done or am I done reading? Can I write or not? Anyway, just wanted to explain that. Since XB knows that there's more to read, uh, it's going to repeat the process so it's going to get a value okay which drive am i going into 803 okay uh what file am i reading 201 and i have to offset 90. i create xb1 and he's aware of this so he's going to grab file 201 and he's going to offset 90 into that file so you see he's at the beginning and then after the next one he just offset basically to the end uh, and he's going to copy those over to XB. XB has also is aware that I have still like eight more values that I'm reading from A, and that process is gonna keep continuing. So I'm gonna have execution agent A keep going until we have finished reading the DNA sequence. So now XB has, or is in the process of receiving the last of the information. Execution agent A knows that we're done and is going to drop file 200 because we cannot take it out of drive one. Uh, it's got that lock symbol on it. He's gonna jump back into the gateway, grab file 300, seek forward one, and he's gonna copy in the Senator's name as well because we're gonna need that. We're gonna wipe file 300 to leave no trace. And then we're going to head back into 801, grab the directory file one more time, and we're gonna go try and find the name again. This time we're looking for the Senator which is going to take us a minute, so we don't find it first. We'll skip 10. We look at the Carter Lewis, Chris Wiggins, Ted Glenn, Sam Chambers, and we'll go all the way basically to the bottom to find Walker Kane Jr. Now that we've found him, uh, we can start giving XB the same type of directions. We're just sending now, uh, we're just sending over the new information. Uh, at this point, XB is aware of the fact, like, XA had before going and getting the new name had sent over, I have no more to read, like no more values for you. So execution agent B read that and saw, okay, uh, this F jump overwrite mode, read that and saw, okay, we are done reading values. I'm now going to jump over to the second half of my code, which I call the overwrite mode, where I've basically gone back to the beginning of my file. This is the president's DNA information in completion now in this file. We're now going to go and start overwriting the senators with this information. And the process for this is pretty much exactly the same. I get the information from execution agent A. Tell me what drive do I go to? I'll head over there. What file am I grabbing? How much do I have to offset? I create a writer that'll do that. And execution agent B is told how many more are you going to have to do as well. And then instead of having execution agent B reading, from its drone here, now the drone is reading from B. So B is gonna send over 10 values to be written. And then once those have been written, we're done. With that set, XB is gonna check, do we have more to read from XA? Yes, we do. I am now going to continue to do so. And this process will repeat 10 times. Execution agent A will be the one who's aware of how many times we have to go. Now I probably could have execution agent B using testing the end of file. Uh, but I don't think that's necessary at the moment. So then XA. Almost done. So XA has just sent over that I am done. What execution agent A is going to do is, is going to try and go and grab a new name from file 300 because I didn't put any logic for him only to do it twice. 
which is fine because he'll actually end up uh, erroring out. He's going to head back and he's going to try and grab file 300. And that's not going to exist. So he's going to clean himself up because that file doesn't exist. Execution agent B in the meantime is working on transcribing over the last of the DNA sequencing over to uh, its drone. It finished. And then now that it knows that there's no more, it's just going to wipe the temporary file that it had created and take care of itself. Now, there's one question that some people have been asking uh, on this problem particularly, and that is why can't we do, why do we have to do this sequentially? Why can't we do some kind of parallelization, have more than one set of drones doing something? We have five drives going here. And there's a very important note in the description of this problem that you that a lot of people miss that makes it important uh, for how you approach it. And that is this line right here. Note that you may need to overwrite a data chunk with another data chunk from the same file, uh, which could mean that uh, like the first DNA sequence for the president could be in file 201 in drive three. And then the first DNA sequence for the pre for the senator could also be in that same file 201 in drive three. If you're trying to do some kind of parallelization, some kind of like optimization to not do this in order, you'll end up with a situation where you need more than one execution agent holding the same file at the same time, which is not possible. So having the intermediary file that XB had where he went and just got all the information from the president first and then was proceeding to go and write is really the only realistic way of approaching this problem that I can think of, given the, the fact that you will have these clashing conditions between the two. Uh, but that is the first run complete. I will let this fast forward because this one does take a little bit to get through all of its uh, iterations. But this is definitely one of the harder ones, one of the ones where you really had to read the problem to understand. I know that uh, the way that all the data is, is stored is confusing, that the way you have to handle it with your limitations is also hard, and then you're sitting there trying to make it optimal, or at least some people are, other people are just trying to get the problem done. I've been there. Uh, but my approach, you can see, did pretty pretty well. I, I see that there are some people even lower on the histogram. That's insane. I want to know what they did. Uh, but I, I was happy to get on that lower chunk right there for my solution in the end. And we did. And now uh, put on our tinfoil hats because the president and his son, the senator, are in fact clones of each other. The data proves it.